Hey guys, welcome to another Home Lab series video today. In today's video, we're going to be playing a little bit with Synology. Um, I know I made a few videos previously with my Synology NAS, but wanted to kind of explore a little bit more about it. Um, so in this video, we're going to be playing around with creating a LAN and an iSCSI uh, connection for it, which will be essentially kind of similar to um, like adding a disk in VMware, um, but essentially, it, it, Instead of doing it like directly on the server, this will be the disk will be on my NAS, um, but you get the same like functionality of just be over the network. Um, so this is kind of like it kind of depends on your use case whether you will ever decide to use this or not. Um, it's not like a replacement for NFS by any means um, because it's essentially adding a disk to a server. Um, so you can't really use all the functionalities you would with NFS. Um, doing it this way, but if you're looking for like a little bit extra capacity, but you don't want to, you know, you don't have enough slots for like an SSD or something like that, um, this might be a solution for you here. So stay tuned. Let's go get started. All right. So with your normal, you know, Synology interface, it's not, you know, anything too fancy. Um, you can essentially go here, um, click the waffle and hit SAN manager. Um, so from here, we'll create our LUN and our iSCSI. So it's super simple. Just click LUN, click create. We'll just leave it default for LUN 1. We'll put this on our um, volume 1, which is, I just have for testing. Um, and let's do like capacity like 50 gigs. Um, obviously, this will depend on what your use case is that you need for this. Um, so we will thick provision for better performance. Um, but you can also thin for thin provision for like more flexible storage allocation. Um, but in this case, same thing, kind of just depends on what you want. I always love better performance, right? Um, but if you need it more flexible, um, thin provision is always an option. And then here we'll choose an iSCSI target for the LUN network, um, which is the only selection here. So we have to do this no matter what. Um, and in this case, we will allow all but in your case, you might want to specify, you know, your host and like where it's coming from, whether it's a VMware, EXXI, Windows, Linux, Mac OS. So obviously in this case, based off of the title that I'll be putting, um, we're going to connect this to one of our Linux servers. Um, but you can do this with VMware also. But we'll just allow all so we're not worried about permissions and things like that at this point. And then we hit done. So the creation will take, you know, say a few seconds here. It actually is pretty quick. Um, there's not much to it. That's pretty much it from the Synology side. Um, so you can see that we got our target created. So now we just need to hook up our VM to this uh, LUN and iSCSI. So we got a VM here. Um, so I'm already SSH'd in. This is one, this is named NFS client because I was just doing a video on NFS a little bit back. So I figured I'd just reuse this. Um, so by all means, this is not related to NFS whatsoever. Um, but the first thing that we will need to do um, is ins install the iSCSI uh, initiator. And to install it, we will just do a yum uh, hyphen y install iSCSI initiator utils and depending on if I actually type that in right I think I did <laughs> uh, it should install if you type initiator wrong and I've done it before multiple times Initi. oh I, I, I actually didn't miss an I initiator see if you type it in wrong it's not going to work <laughs> All right, so now that we have that installed, we can use the iSCSI admin um, command, essentially, because that's part of the utils. We'll do a discovery, and we will do send targets, and then we will select um, our IP of our Synology NAS, which I have on 192.168.1.9. Um, so we can do this, and you have to type in iSCSI, right? because I keep on forgetting the second I, S, second S. <clears throat> so now you can see that this um, Synology NAS that I had has a target that I can connect to. Um, it'll be very similar to what you see right here, the IQN 2000 whatnot, 
you know, IQN 2000 and whatnot, and then you got the target ID here. So what we'll want to do is essentially hook up that iSCSI to our machine. So SCS, I-S-C-S-I, -S -S oh my God. Um, I, it's gonna take me a while to like actually like type it correctly. Um, we'll add a node and we will copy and paste this and we just need the name of it. <clears throat> Don't need anything above it. Um, and then we will do hyphen L. So it will essentially log in and connect. Now, if you did set up custom parameters on like which host can add to this, um, you might rent an error saying, hey, you know, this host isn't valid because it's, it might not be in like the range that you add. Um, so that's something to be aware of. But if you allow all and everything, it just will log in and get it. Um, so you can also run iSCSI admin um, and do m session hyphen p3. Um, and this will essentially give you like a summary of what you have connected. So in this case, you can see that I have this target iSCSI non-flash. Um, yeah, my my test analogy has obviously not like SSDs in it. Um, actually, my, my main synology doesn't either. <laughs> Uh, but you can see that it's actually attached and running. So it's on disk SDB. So this is like when you do add like a new disk in VMware, it will come up with the next letter. So SDA was the first with my boot. SDB is obviously my second. So if we do like an F disk list here, we can see that we added a new disk, which really is the LUN with iSCSI. That's 50 gigs. Um, and then we could just do, you know, our normal disk operations on here, whether you want to use this and expand a volume or even create a new volume. So like, for example, I can just do F disk dev SDB. We will do N for new primary, leave the disk defaults for permission and first and last sector. Um, we, then we'll do, uh, I believe it's T for type. And then you can see all the types here, but we will do 8E for Linux LVM, and then W for quit, uh, W for write and quit. So now we can see in here, F disk, that we have a new partition for this. Um, and then we can, you know, go through our, you know, normal steps where we would do like a PV create dev SDB one, create the physical volume. Um, we will create the volume group called like VG data in this case, dev SDB one. And then we will create a logical volume from that volume group called LV data. And then we will allocate hundred percent free um, from whatever's in the VG data volume group. And then from there, we need to actually set the file system type. Um, so we will just do XFS and then at dev vg data uh, lv data so then you know obviously this will create um your volume type and you know this is like super you know quick and simple of you know just being able to use it you can obviously do the same thing and do uh the extent you can extend this disk as a you know another to another volume if you wanted to but in this case we're just going to create a disk just to show you guys um, and then we'll just create like a data directory and then we can mount dev VG, VG data, LV data to data. And so we can see in here, we got VG data, LV, LV data, 50 gigs is now mounted to slash data. So anything that I write in slash data now will write out to my uh, Synology on its LUN and iSCSI network. Um, and just for the fun fact, in case you guys are interested, obviously if we um, restart this machine, the data directory won't be mounted by default because I just ran the mount command. So if you actually want to set this up, um, you would edit Etsy FS tab, and we would add in here, dev VG data LV data mounted to data, we are, it's an XFS file type, and then we'll just slap defaults zero, zero. Then we'll have to um, reload. 
So that picks up the new configuration. And then what we can do is do like a mount hyphen A. And this will hang because my my actual NFS server <laughs> um, is actually down right now. So it actually hung on this one. So let me comment that out. Um, <laughs> uh, reload. And then if we do a mount A, it, it's like instant. Um, usually it should be pretty instant, but because my server is currently unavailable, it was would retry for like a few seconds to minutes before it happened. But now you can see that um, it will now be persistent on restart for my new volume. So, but yeah, if you're looking for another, you know, extra storage because your, you know, VMware or Proxmox, you know, data store is too full and you need to add more disks, this is another way to essentially do it. So hopefully you guys learn something or I'm gonna plan to do this because you're running out of space, but you got an awesome Synology NAS with terabytes worth of data um, because that is actually kind of what I have and it's a lot of fun. Um, so, but remember backups. Remember you need backups. <laughs> if anything you take away from this video, don't, don't keep everything on, on one NAS. <laughs> Uh, but anywho, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.